McDonald's. In the world of fast food, this name has risen and towered above the competition. However, hidden underneath those iconic golden arcs are some disturbing truths. McDonald's have faced numerous allegations, legal cases, and lawsuits. They have been accused of animal cruelty, wage theft, and even child exploitation. That's not to mention the shocking betrayals that happen behind closed doors. So buckle up, we're going on a journey deep into the insane story of the original giant fast food chain. How did McDonald's really become one of the world's most famous and recognizable brands spreading to over 120 countries with a staggering 37,000 locations? Because one thing's for sure, you don't become the king of fast food by playing by the rules. If you were to go on the official McDonald's website today, you'll find them say that the story begins with a single founder named Ray Kroc. They actually have the title written, Our Story Starts With One Man. But this is anything but the truth. Remember this name for now. We'll come back to Ray soon. To find out the real truth of this story, we have to dig deep and uncover the secrets that the McDonald's don't want you to know. Now, let's travel back in time. The year is 1940, and two brothers own a small drive-in diner, which was not that much different to any other drive-in diner at the time. However, in 1948, these two brothers would go on to revolutionize the way we eat burgers and bring rise to the fast food industry as we know it. The brothers' names were Mac and Richard McDonald from San Bernardino, California. Their idea was to produce huge quantities of food at very low prices and have it served very quick too. To achieve this, they limited the menu to only feature hamburgers, french fries, pies, and drinks. They included a self-serve counter to eliminate waiters and cook their burger patties in advance to save time. This now allowed them to streamline their services into a format they would name Speedy Service System, but it also allowed them to charge just 15 cents per hamburger, which is half of the price of any competing restaurant. This would be around $2 in today's economy. The name of this revolutionary diner? McDonald's, named after their founders Mac and Richard McDonald's after all. McDonald's was a huge success, so much so that the brothers decided to begin franchising. In 1953, they franchised their first restaurant in Phoenix and then multiple restaurants in Arizona and California. Franchising, however, was never a focus for Mac and Richard. Little did they know that this lack of focus would lead them to a series of very unfortunate events that would ultimately lead them to the loss of their company. Enter Ray Kroc. Here's where the story begins to get dark. Ray Kroc was a salesman for appliances. McDonald's bought some equipment from him. In one order, McDonald's purchased eight molten shake mixes. Ray was so intrigued by the scale of this purchase that he had to go and see how on earth this small-time diner could be selling so many milkshakes. What he found would change the course of not only Ray's future, but the future of McDonald's and the fast food industry as we know it. But let's back up a second and look at the early beginnings of Ray. Before his job as an appliance salesman, Ray had very little success in his career. He bounced between a variety of odd jobs ranging from selling paper cups to even trying to become a musician. None of them really worked out for him. He finally decided to become a milkshake mixer salesman, which is how he stumbled upon McDonald's. So now here he was, standing in front of the McDonald's diner. Ray looked around to see at least a dozen cars parked around the McDonald's diner with people outside waiting in line to order. This struck him as not only unusual, but also unorthodox, as in that time waiters and waitresses would come to the car to take your order. When it was his time to order, he made the order, and within 30 seconds, he had received his order. Ray was initially confused and actually thought they were giving him the wrong order. No way his order could have been completed that fast. The employee assured him that this was his order. Upon accepting that this was, in fact, his order, the confusion moved towards the packaging. There was no trays, no cutlery, only a paper bag and a foam cup. He once again asked the employee if there had been a mistake. The employee assured him that there was no mistake. You are able to eat it straight from the wrapper and just throw it away when you're done. This new system bewildered Ray. He went to sit and eat his meal. He assumed the burger would taste horrible. Surely something made that fast would be rushed and be lacking in taste. He was shocked when he took the first bite and it was the best burger he has ever had. Not only did it taste amazing, it was cheap, arrived fast, and was very fresh. He looked around at the dozens of people around him enjoying the meals just as much as he was, and he knew this was something he needed to be a part of. Ray would then go on to meet Mac and Richard, where they gave him a tour of the restaurant and the speedy service system, which would go on to create the fast food industry as it is today. 
Ray then pitched an audacious idea to the brothers, franchising. He believed their model was the blueprint for a nationwide, if not global, chain of quick service restaurants. With the blessing of the brothers, Ray opened his first McDonald's franchise in Des Plaines, Illinois in 1955. The relationship initially seemed symbiotic. Ray's relentless ambition and the McDonald brothers' pioneering business model sparked the birth of a fast food empire. But the harmony wouldn't last long. Ray's aspirations for rapid expansion conflicted with the McDonald's brothers' contentment with their smaller scale operation. As tensions rose, Ray adopted an aggressive tactic that would forever alter the fate of McDonald's. In a twist that resembled more of a game of monopoly than a business strategy, Ray created a separate company named the Franchise Realty Corporation. This new entity purchased the land on which McDonald's restaurants were situated and then leased it back to the franchisees. Let's go into this a bit deeper. Ray was advised by Harry Sunborn, a financial consultant who later became the first president and CEO of McDonald's Corporation. Sunborn convinced Ray that the real money wasn't in selling hamburgers and fries, but in owning real estate. The idea was simple, yet brilliant. Instead of allowing franchisees to lease their own locations, McDonald's would buy the land and then lease it to them. This strategy would serve two major purposes. First, it would provide Ray with a steady and reliable income stream. Even if a franchisee's sales fluctuated, their rent payments remained constant. Second, it would give Ray a considerable amount of control over its franchisees. If a franchisee didn't adhere to the company's standards, Ray could threaten to terminate their lease. To implement this strategy, Ray formed a new company, the Franchise Realty Corporation. This entity would purchase the land for the new McDonald's locations and lease it back to the franchisees, effectively making McDonald's one of the world's biggest real estate companies. Ray's cunning real estate move put immense financial pressure on the McDonald brothers. The increasing rent siphoned their profits, eroding the viability of their beloved business and pushing them into a corner. Ultimately, the McDonald brothers gave in to the pressure. In 1961, they sold the company to Ray for $2.7 million, a move that allowed Ray to seize control and proceed with his vision of making McDonald's a global icon. To put that into perspective, today, McDonald's is worth over $200 billion. Ray not only commandeered the McDonald's empire, but went a step further. He rebranded the original San Bernardino location as a regular McDonald's franchise and, in rewriting history, positioned himself as the sole founder of McDonald's. While Ray's aggressive tactics and grand vision propelled McDonald's to global domination, the outcasted McDonald brothers were left in the shadows, their contribution largely forgotten, marking a darker chapter in the history of the Golden Arches. Under Ray's leadership, McDonald's underwent a period of rapid expansion. By the end of the 1950s, there were more than 100 McDonald's locations across the United States. Ray's ambitious vision and relentless pursuit of growth propelled McDonald's forward. In the 1960s, the company averaged a staggering rate of opening a new restaurant every nine days. By 1965, a decade after Ray opened his first McDonald's franchise, the company had more than 700 locations. The Golden Arches had become a recognized symbol of fast, affordable food. In 1967, McDonald's took its first step into the international market, opening restaurants in Canada and Puerto Rico. From there, the expansion continued at a breathless pace. By the end of the 1970s, McDonald's had more than 5,000 restaurants in over 30 countries. In terms of sales, McDonald's growth was equally impressive. In 1961, the company recorded $37 million in sales. By 1965, this figure had more than tripled to $130 million. And in 1980, just two decades after Ray's first franchise opened, McDonald's annual sales exceeded $4 billion. Every day, millions of people around the world were served at McDonald's restaurants. The company estimates that it serves over 70 million people each day, more than the entire population of the United Kingdom. And yet, while the rapid expansion and impressive sales growth are remarkable, they are just one part of the McDonald's story. As the company grew, it not only transformed the fast food industry, but it also left an indelible impact on global culture. Its strategic use of marketing destroyed their competitors and ultimately led to their world domination. Since the early days, McDonald's ads have painted an image of a family-friendly restaurant serving tasty and fun meals. In 1963, the company hit marketing gold with the creation of one of the most enduring mascots in advertising history, Ronald McDonald. 
More than just a clown, Ronald was envisioned as a chief happiness officer, a symbol of the fun and joy the brand hoped to bring to customers' lives. From the TV commercials to charity events, Ronald McDonald's presence has left an indelible mark on the brand's identity. Another major marketing win came in 1979 with the introduction of the Happy Meal. These kids' meals, complete with a toy, revolutionized the fast food industry. They created a unique dining experience that was more than just food, it was entertainment, it was a joyous moment for kids. Over the years, McDonald's continued to masterfully craft its marketing strategies, launching successful promotions that often turned into cultural events. Think of Monopoly at McDonald's, or the frenzy over the limited-time Szechuan sauce following its mention in a popular TV show. Even in the world of sports, McDonald's has left a significant mark, sponsoring major events like the FIFA World Cup and the Olympics, thus ingraining its brand in the memories of billions of sports fans around the world. Yet, for all of its marketing brilliance, the brand hasn't been immune to criticism and controversy. From health concerns to labor disputes, the journey of the Golden Arches has had its share of challenges. Beneath the bright lights of the Golden Arches, McDonald's has had its share of dark moments, leading to several controversies that have sparked global debates. First and foremost, the fast food giant has come under fire for its high fat, high sugar and high salt menu. Critics argue that the addictive nature of such foods, rich in empty calories but poor in essential nutrients, contributes to health issues. As an example, a documentary named Super Size Me in 2004 highlighted the health repercussions of consuming McDonald's food regularly, with the filmmaker Morgan Spurlock eating only McDonald's meals for an entire month, leading to significant health decline. Labor practices within McDonald's have also been a source of controversy. Reports of underpaid and overworked employees have often made headlines. For instance, in 2020, McDonald's workers in 20 cities across the United States staged a walkout during lunchtime to protest against low wages. Internationally, the company has faced allegations of child labor in its supply chains, with a 2016 report from the NGO Danwatch revealing that young children were involved in harvesting soybeans in Brazil, a key ingredient in the animal feed for McDonald's chickens. On the environmental front, McDonald's footprint is far from negligible. The company has been blamed for encouraging deforestation. One report published in the journal Nature linked soybean suppliers for McDonald's to the destruction of native forests in Brazil. In terms of waste, McDonald's has often been targeted for its reliance on single-use packaging. One audit conducted by the Break Free from Plastic movement in 2018 found that McDonald's was one of the top five global contributors to plastic pollution. These controversies have not gone unnoticed. They fueled public anger and led to boycotts, lawsuits, and demands for policy changes. One of the most striking episodes in the history of McDonald's controversies is the McLibel case. In 1986, environmental activists Helen Steele and David Morris distributed leaflets accusing McDonald's of several wrongdoings, including destroying rainforests and exploiting children with their advertising. In response, McDonald's initiated a libel lawsuit, resulting in the longest-running case in English history. In a true David vs. Goliath scenario, the duo defended themselves against the corporation's legal team, unearthing several uncomfortable truths about the company in the process. In the end, while the court ruled that some of the allegations were a bit stretched, it agreed that McDonald's exploited children with their advertising, falsely advertised their foods as nutritious, and were culpably responsible in the inflection of unnecessary cruelty to animals. This partial victory for Steele and Morris was seen as a significant embarrassment for McDonald's. Beyond the established controversies, McDonald's has been the subject of some more peculiar accusations. For example, there was a claim that McDonald's food doesn't decay. Photos of McDonald's burgers seemingly unchanged after several years have made the rounds on the internet, sparking rumors about the unnatural quality of the food. However, food scientists have debunked this myth explaining that any food, given the right conditions, like the dry environment in most homes, can dehydrate before it has a chance to rot. Another wild accusation that made its rounds on the internet was the claim that McDonald's used kangaroo meat in its Australian branches. This rumor was fueled by a funny advertisement from a kangaroo burger. However, McDonald's has denied these claims, stating that all of its burgers are made from 100% locally sourced beef. Perhaps the most visually shocking rumor is the infamous pink slime accusation, suggesting that McDonald's used mechanically separated chicken treated with ammonium hydroxide in their nuggets. While this caused a considerable uproar, McDonald's was quick to address the issue. They clarified that their chicken nuggets are made from boneless white meat chicken, and the pink slime image circulating online has no connection to their products. 
In an attempt to combat misconceptions and rumors about its food, McDonald's launched the Our Food, Your Questions campaign. Through this initiative, they've addressed customer queries and concerns, providing insights into their food sourcing and preparation processes. Regarding labor practices, McDonald's has taken steps to improve conditions for its employees. It has started to raise wages in company-owned restaurants, although critics argue this doesn't help the vast majority of workers in franchise locations. Additionally, the company launched the Archways to Opportunity program, which provides educational resources and tuition assistance to eligible employees in the United States. On the environmental front, McDonald's has committed to sustainability goals. They aim to source all food and packaging from sustainable suppliers, recycle guest packaging in every restaurant, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. In some countries, McDonald's has started replacing plastic straws with paper ones and has begun testing new recyclable and renewable packaging solutions. And quite recently, they have begun advertising campaigns focused on their teams working on new and innovative cup designs that are made of recycled materials. Whether it's confirmed controversies or outlandish allegations, the McDonald's narrative is one fraught with highs and lows. As it continues to dominate the global fast food industry, the golden question remains. What does the future hold for McDonald's? Like an ever-evolving creature, McDonald's continues to adapt to the changing times, keeping its golden arches shining bright. Looking forward, the company seeks to leverage technology, embrace sustainability, and rise above market challenges. McDonald's has significantly invested in digital enhancements in recent years. In-store self-order kiosks, mobile order and pay features, as well as AI-powered drive throughs are redefining the McDonald's experience. For example, McDonald's acquisition of the tech company Dynamic Yield in 2019, worth over $300 million, paved the way for AI-driven menu boards that adjust their display based on factors like weather, time of day, and trending items. On the sustainability front, McDonald's has committed to several environmental goals under its Scale for Good initiative. They've pledged to source all food and packaging from sustainable suppliers, reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 36% by 2030, compared to 2015 levels at least, and recycle guest packaging in 100% of their restaurants by 2025. As an example, McDonald's restaurant in Walt Disney World Resort's Epcot, Florida is a net zero energy quick service restaurant. Yet, the fast food landscape is not without challenges. The rise of fast casual and health-focused chains, the demands of the increasingly health-conscious consumer, and the advent of plant-based meat alternatives are transforming the industry. McDonald's has been responding to these shifts, introducing healthier menu options, testing plant-based items like the McPlant, and even experimenting with gourmet offerings in some markets. The journey for McDonald's, however, is far from over. As the corporation strides into the future, the world watches to see if the fast food giant can successfully evolve while addressing its controversies. As we've seen, McDonald's journey from a small California drive-in to the symbol of global fast food is a tale of innovation, branding genius, and fierce adaptability. From introducing the speedy service system to establishing the iconic golden arches, McDonald's has consistently set benchmarks for the industry. Yet, its path has not been without controversy. The company's impact on global health, labor practices, and the environment have been points of intense debate and criticism, and these are issues the corporation cannot afford to ignore. As it steps into the future, McDonald's is attempting to adapt once again. Its efforts to integrate technology and improve sustainability practices reflect an understanding of evolving consumer preferences and expectations. The fast food landscape may continue to change, but McDonald's enduring presence is a testament to its ability to reinvent itself. As the company continues to evolve, one thing remains certain. The golden arches aren't going anywhere. As we leave you with these thoughts, remember, every Big Mac has a story to tell, and so does every corporation. Until our next deep dive into the world of giants, this is Financial Viz signing off.